You are listening to the audio recording of the chapter Knowledge and Wisdom, which is written by Bertrand Russell. Before we start off with the essay, it is very crucial to know what um, knowledge is and what wisdom is because they are different entities and we cannot associate them as one or class them as one because knowledge is a different thing and wisdom is a different thing um, if we look at the meaning of knowledge it is about facts information and skills acquired through experience or education or also the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject so you're understanding something but you're not looking at um, the problem or what will be the problem if um, if this is used or something like that awareness or familiarity gained by experience of a fact or situation now look if we look at wisdom the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. So that is wisdom. So there's a clear distinction. In the sense that knowledge is, this, uh, in simple term, the whole idea of seeking something. Regardless of whether it is right or whether it is wrong. That is knowledge. But if we look at wisdom, the quality of um, having experience and good judgment, that is um, wisdom. One good example is, knowing a tomato is a fruit is knowledge. Knowing not to put it in a fruit salad is wisdom. So you know the tomato I is uh, a fruit because it comes under this category of fruits, not under the the category of vegetables it comes under the category of fruits so knowing that a tomato is a fruit that is knowledge knowing that a tomato is a fruit but not putting this uh, or adding this tomato in a fruit salad that is wisdom so I'm sure you've got this um, distinction now a sense of Proportion is very much necessary for wisdom. That's what uh, Burton Russell says. So what is this uh, whole idea of a sense of proportion? Um, the ability to judge the relative importance or seriousness of things that is a sense of proportion. Having the ability to judge this, uh, the importance of different things is a sense of proportion he gives the example of a scientist who may reduce the infant death rate but if we don't have the sense of proportion that invention can also lead to population explosion and shortage of food the standard of life will also come down if misused this knowledge of atom can lead human to destruction of manufacturing nuclear weapons knowledge with, without wisdom can be harmful and um, even complete knowledge is not enough for example Hegel wrote with great knowledge about history but made the Germans believe that they were the superior race they were the race above every race so it led to war because the Germans thought that they were the most superior race so it is necessary therefore to combine knowledge with wisdom we need wisdom both in public and private life we need wisdom to decide the goal of our life and we also need it to free ourselves to let go of ourselves from personal prejudices or uh, this selfishness, our own selfishness. Wisdom is also needed to avoid dislike for one another, 
For example, two persons may remain enemies because of their prejudices. But if they can be told that we all have flaws, we all have shortcomings, we all have these um, limitations, then they may become friends. So hate, hatred should be our slogan. Hate, hatred. Do not love, hate, hatred. Do not love hatred, but hate, hatred. That should be our slogan. Wisdom lies in freeing ourselves or um, emancipating ourselves from the control of our sense organs. Our ego develops through our senses. We cannot be free from the sense of sight, sound, and touch. We know the world primarily through our senses. So as we grow, we discover or we will discover that there are other things also and we start recognizing them. Thus we give up this uh, thinking for ourselves and we start thinking for others. And when we start thinking for others, we become wiser. We give up on our ego. Wisdom comes when we start loving others. So if we let go of our selfishness, if we let go of our own desires and likings, and we start loving others, then wisdom will prevail in our lives. Russell feels that wisdom cannot be taught um, only with this use of knowledge. Wisdom can be taught only by uh, giving this sense of proportion. Even though we are born unwise, which of course we cannot help, we can cultivate wisdom. He gives the example of um, Henry the Fourth in France, Queen Elizabeth in England, and Abraham Lincoln in the United States of America. They were the leaders who were able to mix knowledge and wisdom together. So Russell says that the true aim of education is the ability to find an impartial solution and freeing ourselves from personal prejudices. It is the ability to make a man aware of the need to integrate wisdom in the pursuit of uh, knowledge. So wisdom is necessary in education because with every increase of knowledge and skill, wisdom becomes more necessary. And if wisdom is inculcated, if wisdom is added, it helped in realizing our purposes, um, whether it is wise or, or unwise. It helps us to figure out what we are doing is wise or unwise. Russell believes that it is unwise or it is not wise to pursue certain goals if it is impossible of wisdom or if it is impossible of achievement. He points out that the essence of wisdom is to free ourselves from the confinement of the physical world and the emotional world and look beyond. He also points out that this uh, emancipation from personal prejudice or freeing ourselves from personal prejudice makes one's thoughts and feelings to become less personal which in a way leads to uh, this uh, contribution to wisdom. Remember comprehensiveness alone cannot constitute wisdom. Comprehensiveness in the sense that having this wide knowledge about something that cannot constitute wisdom. It should be combined with total needs of mankind. It should be related with certain knowledge of the purpose of life. If we look back at Hegel, Hegel had this comprehensiveness. But what he lacked was, according to the author, he lacked this um, wisdom. He only had comprehensiveness or knowledge. That was his problem. So it is therefore necessary to 
contribute knowledge with um, feelings. So how does uh, Russell distinguish between wisdom and knowledge? So remember, knowledge and wisdom are different things. We cannot club them together. Wisdom does not come immediately with knowledge. According to Russell, um, knowledge is defined as the acquisition of data and information, while wisdom is defined as the practical application and use of the knowledge to create value. Wisdom is gained through learning and practical experiences and not just memorization. So wisdom without I'm sorry, knowledge without wisdom can be really harmful. Even complete knowledge is not enough. It should be combined with the total needs of mankind. And the example is Hegel. So he wrote with great knowledge about history, but made the Germans believe that they were the, the most powerful race in the whole world, which led to war. So it is very important to uh, impart education in whatever we, uh, we are seeking or we are looking for. It should go hand in hand. It cannot be... Uh, uh, left behind wisdom cannot be left behind or should not be so it should go hand in hand on the same level not high or not low so both should be given equal importance and that can be done if we are able to remove our personal prejudices or our selfishness